I think that takes us to the next topic. Next topic that uh, Shego is very, very relevant to, and uh, we need he, we need his input here. Yeah, I think that um, I I am glad he actually accepted um, my interview to be here. I'm, I think uh, I'm honored for that. And uh, yes, um, August um, August uh, protest. Well, we're talking about August protest now, and um, we've had this is one protest um, that. I don't know. I don't know if I, I accept anyone should anyone should correct me if I'm wrong. This is the, this this protest has this probably is the to me I see this as unprecedented. The one the publicity and secondly the the attraction the people the the the, 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 the attraction it's gaining uh, especially when it comes to up to the presidency. The way I've never I've not seen a protest that has actually generated such intense um resistance um res resistance from from the government a sort of that has actually uh, put, uh, uh insinuated kind of has projected a kind of fear and skepticism and uh, a kind of um um I, I don't know how to actually the right word to actually but that is just the protest is just I, I don't know I just hope I just hope because when something is well very well hyped, Overly hyped this way, it eventually it end, it end, eventually ends up uh, disappointing people. People end up feeling disappointed at the end of the day. Um, that is why I actually needed you. To, I actually wanted you to be here to actually answer a few questions about this protest, uh, Shebu. Now, um, this August protest. First, who are the organ? Who is or who are the organizers? Well, if you want me to mention names specifically, I will disappoint you. I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to tell you authoritatively that the sponsors and the organizers and the people who would participate in this um, protest are Nigerians who are patriotic, Nigerians who want Nigeria free from the shackles and the hold of cabals and mafias. They are Nigerians who care about this country. They are Nigerians who have suffered. They are Nigerians who have loved, who have lost loved ones. They are Nigerians who want to see Nigeria prosper. They are Nigerians who want to see Nigeria great, not in words, but in action. They are Nigerians. The people who are behind this uh, protest are people who are concerned about the future of their own children and themselves. Even if you have five years to live, you want to live it well and right. So they, uh, the people who are behind this protest, who want to see Nigeria All right. Um. Thank you that, for that. I, 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 in fact, I expected that. Actually, I expected that response. A sort of. So it's not surprising to me. Um. Anyway, I just had to ask it anyway. Anything can happen. Uh, that's what I thought. <laughs> so. Um. All right. Second question, please, Barista. I'm coming to you. I just the we say I need him. I need. We need to know everything about this. What to expect from this protest. Um. So my second question on this is. What are the objectives? Um, what are the objectives of this protest? I am asking why I asked this. I chose to ask this question is because um, I have been. This is the reason I've not followed uh, or uh, show Ray all this why for the first time because of this protest. I had to follow him on Twitter to actually see get go through for get updates from through him. A sort of uh, because uh, I have my reservation with Omoyele. Uh, uh, um, Shore, uh, because um, I, I don't see him as a credible and the right person to actually be the face of this protest because um, that's not our topic for today. It's a different thought stuff entirely. So um, why I am asking this question, why I ask this question is because I'm following him. I see I was asking for people to send him um, what they want from the government, what they want to write on the on the placards on the on uh, whatever all what they desire what they want is so, so it's i and when i saw that when i saw that um i i i asked myself what is going on here um if you're organizing something you should you should have a focus at this point this thing has been going on for some time now and the protest will be taking place it will start by next week sort of at this point you are still asking people to bring in whatever they want written on the there should be a focus. There should be a direction. There should be an objective, a, um, an a, an objective a, 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 that is a, a unanimous objective. 
by especially the organizers because the organizer people the common man on the street actually look up to the organizers whoever is piloting this whole thing they want to the moment you blow the whistle like this they want to tell you they want them to tell you to tell them the direction to take what direction or whatever so you don't you don't give an impression of of uh, of uh, the impression that uh, the, there is no is a directionless is a directionless protest where everybody this one takes this direction that one takes this direction and placards are uh, you hear you see so many things coming on the placards or whatever that is not focused on something um so that is that is uh, what i actually want that's why i asked that question what is or what are the objectives of this protest Shegun. Well, um, if you remember a couple of days ago, I sent you some memes, and um, there were um, most of them were structured under some issues that are prevalent with us as the people. One of them is the leadership. Um, for me, for one, um, I would not want us to restrict what the demands would be to just a few things because there are so many issues that we are fighting and facing as a people. What would be important to me may not be important to you. What may be important to you may not be important to the barrister. What may be impo important, important to the barrister may not be important to another person who may also want to be part of it. We have decided that it is better for people to express themselves than for people to express them, uh, their desires for them. One of the reasons why we have a failure in leadership is because most of our leaders think they know what we, we want, and they think for us without asking us. If um, you're comfortable putting on a suit and a tie, why should the man show you Bougain Shokoto? That is restricting you. Even if you respect the man and you wear the Bougain Shokoto for, uh, for, for some time, it will get to a point that you get angry and you want to express yourself. That is the situation we find where we find ourselves in Nigeria. And unfortunately, a man who you have refused the rule to express himself would explode. And that's one of the reasons why this protest must go on and it will go on. Why? There is no way of speaking to the government this day except through protest. Unfortunately, you're supposed to go through your national assembly. That's the lower and the upper house. But you can see by the uh, uh, constitution of the people who are, who are occupying, especially the Senate, that they are wrong. People who have messed up their state, either as senators at one time, or probably have served as, as governors or deputy governors, especially governors. 90% of them there have, have been people who have served as governors. And then, um, of course, we look at it like, look, there is no life for them outside politics, except, of course, if they hang in there. And that's one of the reasons why you keep sending bills. I will let you know that we've been sending bills as pressure group, as individuals, because you have also had the right to send the bill to your uh, representative in the Senate to look at issues and say, look, this is an issue that concerns us. And if you don't start with this issue, it is going to affect the whole state and of course, uh, uh, at the end, affect the country. You would you'll be so surprised that some of these senators collect some of these uh, um, um, uh, um, petitions, read through them, and instead of making them a bill to sponsor in the National Assembly, would rather sit down in the National Assembly and unfortunately and speak. The only time you get to see their answer or you get to hear their voice at all, is when they are, the, the issue of 160 million uh, is being discussed. Or probably where you would find your, uh, your, your weekend enjoyment in your email, like Atabi Otoz is, co is colleague on the other side. So it's quite unfortunate that we don't have the ears of the people who are supposed to be representing us in the Senate and in the lower house. The lower house, to a certain extent, are trying their best. There are people in the lower house who speak up and say some of these things and with some of these grievances, but people don't listen because the government does not want to listen, they don't, they don't have a plan. If they listen to your plan, it's going to be real there, and that's one of the reasons why they don't do this. So, part of this plan, like I said, is not tailored particularly. We, we, we are not looking at a situation where we tell people to go and ask for candy when actually what they need is direct. We're not looking at a situation where we ask people to go ask for petrol when what they need actually is, is water. We need a breathing space. We need a leadership that is designed properly to represent the interests of the people. One of our fundamental uh, uh, um, 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 uh, requests is for us to do something about the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. 
the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as it is constituted right now, favors the president to do whatever it is that he wants to do. Five stars and correct me if I'm wrong. But I'm going to put it in layman's terms. The Constitution is a plan going nowhere. It doesn't lead us anywhere. It doesn't tell us this is where we're going. It doesn't tell us this is where we're going to arrive or when we're going to arrive. When we arrive, what exactly are we going to be doing? The Constitution does not spell that out. Yes, they will tell you they are subject to uh, interpretation. But of course, you and I know, if you carry who hold, give up madman, you pass and sit on that instead. They, they are not going to pass any bill in the National Assembly or anywhere else that will favor the ordinary man, except you protest. Except when they hear that your voice is go, uh, has gone up. You can see the president running up and down. Initially, they thought it was a joke. But unfortunately, it's beginning to take traction. He's beginning to listen. He didn't want to listen at first. They were using intimidation. They were trying to arrest people, pick them up, off their phones to see and listen to their conversations and monitor their movement to see if they're going to be violent. No, that is not the plan. The plan is to protest, to ask for a true leadership. Are we going right as a country? Is this where we want leadership to end? Where exactly are we going to the issue of hunger, especially in Nigeria? Hunger can give birth to a lot of children, and the children that we give, give birth to, some of them have not been named yet. As I'm talking to you now, we have some situations where people in broad daylight are caught with a weapon and take away your values. Some will not just take away your values, they will take the person's right. Is this the kind of country that we want? And the reason why all of this is happening is because people can't find anything to even do. The junior jobs that you find around in those days that you tell people to, oh, go to so so and so place and do X, Y, Z and get a Naya or a cook. You can't go there anymore to get that. Even the civil servants who are talking about the, uh, salary increase will tell you that they are not sure that they have the salary tomorrow. Because as I'm talking to you now, they're compiling names of people to reduce from the civil service. You and I know, if you don't have a godfather, expect God's testing, you have lost your job. How do you expect explain to your family, or how do you feed your family, feed your children, and take care of your, 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 your bills? So I, I, for me, hunger, 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 I repeat three times, is the banner for this particular protest for me. I don't know about anybody else. And then again, on the issue of Shore, Shore is actually not just, uh, people keep looking at Shore as the face of, um, I and Shore don't agree. Whenever we sit and we talk, we, uh, we, I can tell you that 90% uh, of the time, we don't walk out of the room smiling. We stand toe to toe, face to face, and discuss these issues. I don't agree with his uh, with style. But you see, there is a time where you have to come together, especially for common good. And that is why, it is good that we are doing this now. I can tell you here that there are some people that, if I mention their name on this program, probably they may put me in trouble or put you in trouble, that are part of this protest now. We like it the way it is. We are not asking anybody not to come, not to come out to protest. So the only thing we are preaching to people is be very peaceful while you are doing that. Why? All of the documents and the information that the government needs is with the government. All I need to do is with the document. He has read through the page. He has seen our request. He knows what he wants. Didn't he organize a, a protest in 2012? Was he not properly articulated? Was he not part of the, the, the protest at, uh, 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 in Lagos, uh, 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 where he stood and for close to 45 minutes was reading the demand and the idea or, and the direction that he thought that the government should follow? Are you comfortable that all of these things that are happening in Nigeria now are happening? Insecurity, hunger, poverty, lack of value. It takes God for you to wake up today, Mr. Dubrin, to call somebody in Nigeria up and say, Hello, how are you doing? Immediately they remember that you give abroad. The next thing is hunger wants to stop. That is the next thing. How many people's problems would you solve? I know you to be a philanthropist. I know you to be somebody who would, out of the way, reach out to people and say, Look, let me take care of this for you. But how long? As can you continue to do that? Would you not be happy if you have a situation where those people can also call you to say hello to you without having to make demands? Would you not be happy? If you have a Nigeria where you walk into a room and you ask, you, sorry, sir, where are you from? I'm a Nigerian. And they proudly shake your hand and be happy to have you. Not that they will be looking at you as a separate this man because he's a Nigerian. Why? Because we have a space that is terrible. Nobody wants to look at us and do business with us. We keep talking about people investing in Nigeria. Look at what you, you, you put. I love the way you sequence 
this particular program. Look at where it started from, Dangote. Now, transfer Dangote to be the situation we're in now. The government is frustrating Dangote, who is a Nigerian who has invested in Nigeria 100%. They knew he borrowed money. Who gave him the last thing? Was it not the government? But you know, we follow unless you know, come today and say he doesn't know that uh, the person of uh, 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 Aliku Dangote was given the license to operate. What stops him? While he was, while, while he was uh, uh, an ordinary citizen like all of us, from establishing his own uh, um, 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 petroleum station. So, the, the first, I don't want us to put a face to this project because immediately we do that. We're going to be divided among ethnic, interest, uh, and religious, and look, many lines. Those lines will fall there. You begin to, oh, I don't like this person's place, I don't like that person's place. My very good friend in Kaduna State, I'm sure, Barista would know. It's also part of the project. The former governor of Kaduna State. It's also part of the project. <laughs> Yes, honestly, yeah, it's funny. Let me, but when, let me I, when I when I read that when I when I read that interview uh, that uh, news, I said, "Wow, can you imagine? This will not be the enemy of my uh -huh. enemy. Um, uh, is my friend." So <laughs> that <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> what is happening now. <laughs> that's another way everyone wants to fight back against the president, against the, go, the government. Um, only my last yeah. question on this. My my last my last question on this is, what? Okay. Can you give us a projection of the success rate? Uh, do you do you think it will this protest will be effective? Because um, uh, me I have a different opinion on the on your on the objective. Actually, I I think I'll state it earlier uh, later after Manta um is done with his own take. Um, what um the, how effective do you expect this protest to be? All right, I expect it to be very effective. I take me for my word, I don't expect the government to react positively. Of course. We expect that a lot of people will die. We expect that a lot of people will be arrested. We expect that a lot of people will disappear. But what we are going the statement will be made and the government will hear us loud and clear. That is uh, 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 the end result. Yes, we also anticipate because already, already we have intel that. There are um, some misprints already being imported. And that's one of the reasons why I, I mentioned my friend and I mentioned the other man. I, okay, I didn't get to mention him in Canon and a few other people who are also sponsoring Intel. We have Intel that already Pugs, Hoodlums, and Co. have been imported to counter protest. And uh, probably those people are not Nigerians, maybe they fell from the moon and they don't feel the impact of the hunger and the poverty in the land. Let us see what it is that will be on their placard when they protest. But it is expected. So we have reported to the DSS and the security agents that need to, to, to be informed that this is the procession. We, it, it, it's a very simple and uh, a, a formal protest. There won't be any protest to go to the market to tell people, ah, Mr. Dubre, stand up from your way and leave your shop and join us. No, we are not doing that. If you are not hungry, sit where you are. Don't bother. All we need to do is do take the procession to the people who are, who are in, in, in authority and read out our request and submit a document and work with it. That is what we expect. So I expect the very, very first two, three days to be very free, free and fair. Then of course, tell me to the tail end of the second year of the third year. Then you get to get your report of shootings here and there. And of course, which means uh, we are also expecting the um, people, the hoodlums that the government would sponsor. They are already there waiting. They will jump in on the train and see that uh, they caught me. And of course, if you attack somebody, the person would attack back. Then the, uh, the police will tell you, look, we have to shoot people to disperse people because we could no longer control the situation. The police have been inform informed. All the, uh, it is the right, it is the fundamental right of every citizen you know, of any place in the world to protect. Because that's the only way for you to vent and, of course, for the government to listen. So it is right for the police to do their job. Of course, if you notice anybody with a weapon, or somebody who looks on towards. Well, how that to be defend is, is their business to do their job. But of course, right. when we make our statement, how to make our statement, we work away, it's going to be very peaceful. And I expect, of course, that at the end of the day, that the government is listening. Already they're listening. Already they're beginning to talk about some of those issues. But of course, you know how government works. They talk, but when it comes to action, they, they, they become lame. I right, thank you so much for that extensive um, uh, explanation and uh, description of uh, what the protest is all about.
Um, now that uh, takes me to um, Barrister. Barrister, um, uh, Shegu have said so much, uh, sort of. So, what do you think? Um, what is your opinion on what he has said so far? Yes, uh, thank you very much on this. Um, this uh, upcoming protest, I can tell you that wherever I go and whoever I've interacted with, Nigerians want to buy into this protest. They want to identify with the protest because it uh, captures their mood, captures their feeling and their suffering. However, people I have interacted with, they have asked the questions that you asked um, Shegun. And I believe those are some of the drawbacks to the organizers and organization of this protest. Nigerians want to see or to have a face to the protest. They want to see the objective. What do you want to achieve with the protest? Who are the people leading the protest? Because there must be leadership. Even though this affects all Nigerians, there must be leadership. And it would have been better if the people organizing these things came out boldly, put their face on, on television and newspaper and say, we are organizing these people on behalf of Nigerians. And we want Nigerians to follow us. That would have been better. No matter the consequences that uh, come to them, it would have been better and it would have uh, shown people that they are courageous. They are not going to hide and be faceless. It has given the government leeway to spawn all manner of conspiracy theories, to say foreign people are behind it, to say obedience are behind it, and to begin to arrange security, their security architecture under those uh, guises. I would have preferred the organizers to be bold enough to show their faces, even repeatedly. And then, secondly, to articulate in very clear terms the objective, what they want to achieve. Everybody know what the issues are. Everybody know the suffering. Everybody know the insecurities. Everybody know the economy. But what do you intend to achieve with the protest. If there is a clear articulation of this, a lot of people will be comfortable with buying into it. Are we just going to protest for the sake of protesting? Or we want to achieve something? Do we want to use the protest to overthrow the government as the government is now claiming? When the objectives are not clearly set out, it gives room for government to propagate every kind of evil that they want and hide under that to crush or to use security agencies or to get on their own uh, higher ground of uh, opinion, to capture opinion of others. Already, the government has uh, recruited traditional institutions, politicians, uh, wealthy people, individuals, senators, and others to rally against the protest under one guise or the other. I heard somebody saying that you will not join a protest led by faceless people who are hiding somewhere. So, so there are all this manner of talks is going on. Those are the drawbacks. One, lack of a face to it. And two, lack of clear cut articulated objective that every Nigerian will identify with. We want, this is what we want. Of course, there is suffering. You want the government to um to reduce the suffering remember this is politics you have elected a person for instance who campaigned and said he will on day one he will reduce uh, he will remove subsidy of petroleum products and he is claiming that yes he told the people and the people agreed and voted for him so he is doing that so how do you now argue with that so let us articulate the objectives we want to achieve
from this. I am ready to buy into it. I'm even ready to come out to join the protest. And I've heard a lot of people say they are ready to come out and join the protest. I am ready. But I would have been much, much more comfortable to know the people leading it and to have clear cut objectives. This is what we want to achieve because the protest should not just be an end in itself. The protest should be the beginning of something, the beginning of creating a better Nigeria. If it is just a, an end itself, it's going to go nowhere. But if it is a process of starting to reform Nigeria and make Nigeria better, you know that is going to be a long process. It's even going to be bloody. So let's have the people who are leading this and let's have the objectives straightened out right from the beginning and the fight should now be joined. Yeah, okay, thank you so much for that. Um, all right, let me have my take on this. Now, <clears throat> I, I have a, a slightly different view from you guys uh, concerning the object, objectives and uh, how this protest should go. Now, I think I agree with you, Barista, um, that um, you should have a face. Uh, that face should not should be should be courageous and brave and brave enough to show himself or herself or to show themselves if 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 it's a, if they are if it's a team. Um, I I think the face having a face giving a face to this protest, well, I would have actually validated it and made it even more so um susceptible. To, um, to generate empathy and support, uh, empathy and support for, from the public. Um, just like Manta said, um, FACE will actually encourage him to join. It's just many, so many other people will say the same thing. It's sort of, so um, we, at this point in our country, we should have, if someone is coming up to actually fight against the government on the side of the masses, you should be brave and courageous enough um, to make it to make yourself public. Show yourself, um, and that is just it. It's uh, that if because I don't have I'm that, I'm that kind of person who believes in what is worth doing is worth doing well. If you want to do something, they say if you want chop frog, make you chop big one way get egg. A sort of so uh, that is what I expect of the organizers to actually show themselves, show their faces, and. Uh, and uh, tell us who they are so that we'll be able to at least that is one that is one and uh, the other the second thing is the, on the objectives honestly um now i'm that kind of person that um where that uh that, that kind of the a kind, a kind of person that believes in pragmatism in realism things that i that are feasible things that can be done Actually, that I am that kind of I don't I, don't, I I'm not a bogus kind of person who actually demands something from you that I just I just know even myself I know you cannot fulfill it. So what I do is actually when I want to make my demands I I weigh the possibility of that demand being fulfilled. That is the possibility will determine the the possibility will determine my my the demand. A sort of so in this case now. So many things, the, the, especially from the, the system has been bastardized. From the economy has been has been damaged severely from long time. But from probably um, okay, Obasanjo did well, relatively well. Uh, Yaradua did shortly, but Joe Yaradua, I wish I wish we allowed. Oh, sorry, not allowed. I wish God uh, permitted Yaradua to live longer. Honestly. Um, Yaradua, I wish I wish God allowed Yaradua to live and Nigerians uh, voted Yaradua for another eight years. Now, now today would have been it. Honestly, the because Yaradua, Yaradua, they say um, the beginning of anything um, will de determines how the uh, 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 something starts. The beginning determines how it will go, how, how successful it will be. In the in Yaradua's case, everybody knew. We saw it. There, we saw everybody. It was there was a clear and a glaring light at the end of the tunnel. So, if God had permitted and allowed Yaradua to live further, Nigeria could have been better. 
So let's say from uh, Buhari to uh, Jonathan to the same, Jonathan messed up the whole system. Okay, from Jonathan time, the issue became worse. It's sort of then Buhari just damaged the whole thing. And now Tinubu again, I don't even know the word to use beyond damage. I don't know. I wish there is something I can use, uh, another word that supersedes damage. It's sort of that's exactly what Tinubu has done. Now, from Jonathan's regime, so many things have gone down the drain. So many damages have done gone down the drain. And especially it became it, sorry, it became in it became even worse during Babu Hari's time. So just, we, we pointed one of the damage. One of the damage is mortgaging Nigeria's future by Buhari Buhari started that mortgage, mortgage. Mortgaging Nigeria's future by selling, borrowing money, but that is selling our crude oil in advance, borrowing money to sell our crude oil in advance. So we are highly indebted that we don't even have crude oil that, that is ours right now to ourselves. In the next, I don't know how many years, I think, who mentioned seven years? Is it up to seven years? I don't know. It was it Shegu that mentioned seven years? So I don't know how many years, but as far as I'm concerned, um, we don't, in coming years, we do not have crude oil that we can actually call our own. The crude oil has been mortgaged already. Um, the crude oil we have that will be in the, that will come up in the next well, maybe some years to come. Um, they've been sold because it's been we don't we can't we don't, don't have our names, our name to it, it's sort of so that is that is one damage. Now, if we are asking for government to do something, the protest says we are coming out to ask for this, that, that I've had I've read so many lists of of demands. Shegun rightly, just like he said, he sent me some, a, a list of it. Um, I went through the whole list. Of, I, I looked at I said, now, this whole list, of course, they are germane. They are important. They are the most important to us. But how feasible is this? How, real, how, how, how realistic is this to achieve by this government that we know is so incapable it's not in, it's, there are several reasons why it, there are a couple of reasons why it's the, the, this government is incapable of achieving such things. One is the foundation of the government, how this man came to. Secondly, is the antecedents, the literal, the existing and uh, the, the existing modus operandi, how the government operates and what how reckless they have been financially. Honestly, in one year, we all know that uh, the our financial fabric. The financial fabric of Nigeria has been so bastardized and bacchanized that it has become hopeless until and unless someone else takes the reign of power. Honestly, we, 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 we will become irredeemable, irredeemable. So, and that is just the truth. That is just the reality. We don't have what it takes right now to fulfill all those because Tinubu has, in his one year, he has caused so much damage in borrowing money, spending money on the wrong things or whatever, destroying the budget in so many ways or whatever, prioritizing wrong, wrong, giving priorities to wrong, wrong, uh, wrong policies and wrong uh, objectives and sort of. So that is not, so my own, my own, what I expect from this protest, the objective I expect from this is just one, one objective. Tribu must go. That is the only pressure. Look, the, you see all those things. You see all those uh, lists of whatever. They, 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 yes, there is a little. I, I told me it has it has minimal pressure. What will bring tremendous pressure? What will what will really bring down an intense and immense pressure on the government of the day? Government of Tinubu is when. The protest is about him leaving the office, resigning. That will bring so much pressure on him, even though it will be uh, almost in Nigerian on the, in the Nigerian context, it will be almost impossible for him to. But it will bring better pressure on him to actually begin to do the thing, begin to act on the right policies, begin to do the right thing, because Nigerians we are so used to our leaders over the years. Have been used to sort protests. We're hungry, they'll kill us. So, uh, hunger, uh, uh, a big powwow. Um, where are you? Where? Nigerian government is. Nigerian government has always been used to this kind of protests. 
So they will listen to us. They will, just like you said, you are expecting them to muzzle muzzle the muzzle the the, uh, the the protesters to 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 silence that's exactly they will, they will they will arrest people they will probably shoot some people they will they will incarcerate so that it has it has happened in the past the same thing the same thing will happen now because this is the same thing we have been doing what we need to do is to do take another route by exerting like look at what is going on in Kenya the man has refused to go, but at least the man is changing because when these people started singing, uh, 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 Ruto must go. That now, what they want is for him to leave. What did he do? He started doing the right thing. He started doing the right, uh, I mean, implementing the right stuff. A sort of that is the only pressure that can that is the only pressure that can actually make Tinubu. Tinubu is an obstinate person. Tinubu is such a person who is a, is a dictator. Tinubu is a man that what, he does things unilaterally. Tinubu is someone who don't listen to people. Tinubu is someone who knows it all. Tinubu is someone who don't who do does whatever Tinubu chooses to do. He spends money anyhow, whichever way he desires. He spends money on things that that are that are appealing to him, not appealing to Nigerians. A sort of he spends money in his own interest. In his own selfish interest, he rules like a dictator. He is no longer, he is no more than, he's no better than a, any military dictator. A sort of. So the truth is, such person, such a man cannot, he, he doesn't empathize. When you, when you listen to him speak, he does not empathize. Any man, any leader, look, good leadership is about empathy. One of the criteria. One of the one of the one of the um, 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 uh, qualities of a good leader is empathy. You, a good leader, should have the ability to empathize with who, the people he is leading. Whoever you are leading, whether a president or a small group in a, in a school in a, in, a, in a forum or whatever, you should have. You should be. You should be. You should be able to empathize with people. You should have the ability to empathize, to, to reason with people, to put yourself in other people's shoes, to understand what they are, to try to, even though you may not be able to, but at least try to, to understand what they are passing through. Tinubu does not have that. He does not have the ability, the capability to empathize with Nigerians, with anyone. He's a selfish man. He's a corrupt man. As far as I'm concerned, everything about Tinubu is corrupt. His mind is corrupt. Everything about him is corrupt. So we shouldn't expect Tinubu to do anything. So the best, in my own opinion, the objective could have been one, one, so that everybody will be in uniform. The entire, or the whole state of Nigeria will go, go, will sing the same song. One objective, Tinubu must go. Tinubu must go. And that is what we would have, that is what could have attracted intense and immense pressure, a, more, a, a, more, a much stronger pressure on the government of the day. It will, it will attract both local and international, uh, international pressure on the president. Look, that at the end of the day, why we are asking for Tinubu? Because sometimes when you are on the negotiation table, on the dialogue table, what, what you do, the another style of negotiation is give the enemy demand from your opponent, not the enemy, from your opponent, what you think that is the maximum or what you think are, is almost impossible to demand, to get from him. As such, I, I, doing such will eventually give you what the enemy, the, your, the opponent will eventually give you what that thing, that the original thing, what inside of you is actually what you actually need. And that's exactly what we could have done. Of course, that pressure for him to leave. And that is it. Um, uh, Shagun, you wanted to say something. You are inching. You were inching to say something. No, not really. Um, you see, <clears throat> I wouldn't want a situation where we, we take it to the extreme. Um, already, they are beginning to say that the sponsors of this election are people who lost against the vote. Everybody knew that nobody lost against him. What he did was hijack the result and declared himself president. 
Um, asking him to go would be more or less like fighting um, the, the, the uh, probably the lawyer to be able to interpret it better. They will tell him he's a legitimate government. Why? Because the court has pronounced him to. Um, not like, like that the Ruto is not um, a legitimate president, that the people are asking it is because of um, his policies that are being wrongly implemented and rubbing off the people. Um, I don't want to believe that Ruto himself wants to do bad. I think he inherited a system that is terrible, sitting on the sidelines, waiting for his own turn to come in. There will be so many revelations in the coming days that I'm sure you would read about. Uh, you would now understand the reason why, for instance, he's fighting somebody, he's using, fighting uh, somebody like Ali Kodango, he's too popular. Then you will get to understand um, what are, we're talking about and how they're going to come to a solution because it's going to be, they're going to be a form of a sharing formula. It is a very noble one, it's a very fantastic one to say that the Nubu must go. But of course, we all know, we have said it from the beginning, this is Nigeria. Why we are doing that, there are people who will still pull out. They are beginning to even say that this protest is organized by the grumpy people who lost election, on one hand. On the second hand, they're saying that the people who are sponsoring this protest are people who are living abroad. And on another hand, they're beginning to say, oh, it is because the North are falling out of people. I was in a, I was in a, a, a group where it was being argued that the city is not out there. That is not enough. That as far as they are concerned, canoes are not considered not enough. You can see to the extent to which Nigeria can, Nigeria can argue. That's why me, I would prefer to say somewhere we focus on issues that affect us directly because those things are taken care of. Say, for instance, supporting the uh, uh, production, move, store, whatever it is that we, we make as, uh, uh, as revenue. If you produce anything here and the government supports you, and the tax is minimal. It's very easy for you to make profit and of course sell at a good price for the people. And then um, you make money, the government makes money, everybody is comfortable. What about the issue of opening up the border? Just by the fact that the borders are closed, people still bring things good in from, from border, from the through the border. Come to the north here and see what is going on. Come to Casino State and see what is going on. Go to uh, 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 Sokoto State and see what is going on. You, one of these days, I'm going, to, I'm going to set again for the problem that you set up for you for yourself. You border, a border bordering Nigeria, Cameroon, Mali, then the Republic, Togo, and Co. Go check those borders and see how poor they look. You can scroll in and scroll out. And those the guys at the customs, all you need to do is go through the floor firepower. Or probably just hand in them. And you have your goods uh, uh, brought in. So, what is wrong in the government opening up the borders when you? There is not, you don't allow us to produce anything because of insecurity. Then you don't allow us to uh, uh, export anything because of, uh, because of your, of, of your uh, stringent uh, uh, policy. Go and look at how much they take from people from manufacturing uh, common pure water. Go and see how much they're pressing their necks. I know of a family who survived. They have about three, just three or four uh, POS machines. The husband wants one, the wife wants one, and I think the two kids. They are all in Lagos. He just sent me a video of himself, of his wife, being recorded. I will send for the video and send to you. Where they were asking, a tax person has been considered in Lagos, and it's going to go around Nigeria, asking people to pay tax to own a POS machine. Now, this man is barely making ends meet. All they do is whatever it is that they make. How much do you make from withdrawing 5,000 naira? 100 naira. If you're going to go to the extreme where there is no cash anywhere, you take maybe maybe you take 200 naira, and people will pay in a hurry because they don't want to go to an ATM. You are closer to them, and it's easier for them to have access to cash. How much? Um, if, if you if you do, um, let's say, uh, uh, 50,000 naira in a day, per period, multiply that by your by your by 100 naira. Is that enough to even buy a a a a, 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 a bag of or half bag of rice? We're not even going to talk about any other thing. Our bag of rice. Is that enough? So, some of these things are things that will lead to all of this. Even in Kenya, if you notice, initially it wasn't about who to go in. Yeah, I understand that. Where it started, yeah, where it started from, it started from uh, 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 the tax. And I'm not sure of uh, which of the, uh, I think it's general tax or so, that started this whole process. Then he got the point, he said, oh, look, I'll fire this guy there. He said, no, we don't think we're not even concerned about the people that you're fired. You yourself must be because you are the problem. Nigerians are very good followers. 
You will make sure the issue of Yaradua at the other time, and you say, you wish that Yaradua had lived long. Probably Nigeria would have been better. I can also tell you the alternative. If Yaradua had lived long, Nigeria, there may not be a Nigeria to live because you don't know who he is. People will tell you that they like a particular government and they don't like a particular government because of their policy. Yes, he was trading on a very good path. But do we know the bad path that would have come if he had been granted long life? Probably the man knew he was going to leave school. Instead of fighting this, this is what I need to do. One of the most courageous decisions I have ever seen any Nigerian leader take all my life was that amnesty program that was introduced, granting amnesty to agitators. They keep, re they keep re re referring to them as criminals who were fighting anybody who were doing this. They own the land, they own the oil. How much of the money that you make from that oil goes to them? How much goes to them? All right. All right. Thank you so much uh, for that. Uh, thank you for this um, uh, topic that you have actually you have actually helped us to um, dig into. And I think uh, we, you've really done justice to it.